Hey everybody, how are you doing? It's Crystal Ann Compton. I am popping up today to talk to you a little bit about the spirit of spirits, and in particular, the spirit of booze and the spirit of drugs and the spirit of specifically intoxication. This is an important subject that I think a lot of intuitive people need to know. Uh, and I'll tell you why that is. But before I do, I just wanna encourage each and every one of you to subscribe to my channel just by scrolling down a little bit and hitting that subscribe and maybe clicking on that little bell. If you do that, then you'll get notified each and every time I upload a video. And let me tell you something, okay? In 2018, I intend on up-leveling my YouTube game. I'm really not sure how that's gonna look. I have some goals. Right, last year this time in 2017, my goal was like get a video up every single week. And for the most part, I've done that. And in some, time, in some cases, I've actually exceeded that goal. This year though, I really just wanna play. I just really wanna play around on YouTube. I wanna connect with people on YouTube. I wanna do things like live streams. You know, I really don't know how to do that. Like how do you do a Twitch? I don't know. I really want to have sacred, maybe um, separate spaces for me to connect with my subscribers here on YouTube. I wanna do things like readings, depending on the forum. I wanna offer content at a higher level here on YouTube. So if you're interested in spirituality, if you're interested in metaphysics, and if you align with me, then hit that subscribe and let's stay connected. I also wanted to just mention that in two weeks, we are cutting the ribbon. We are beginning the 2018 Intuitive Intensive. This is a big deal. I know I've been talking about it, ad infinitum. I know a lot of you are just over it, but it's a big deal. This is a 12 week program in which both myself and my really good friend, Trisha Carr, who uh, is the founder of the Charmed Life radio program. I don't know if you know who she is. She's awesome. You should know who she is, but we're doing this program together and we are going to be touching upon just about everything spiritual with a focus on identifying and developing the intuitive faculties, those connection sources that we all have, because we all have a built-in system of connection to spirit, like discovering what that is for each and every one of us and then blasting those resources open, blasting those connections open and starting to do things like talk to our spirit guides or angels or channel or divine and so on and so forth. This is going to be a high level comprehensive program. And if you're interested in taking your spiritual journey to the next level while being guided and coached by me and also Trisha Carr, then you want to go to thelightworkerslab.com slash intuitive, thelightworkerslab.com slash intuitive register. We start the week of February 20th. I would love to see you there. All right. Now let's talk about the booze. Let's talk about the boozies. The reason I think it's important for intuitive people to talk about this and to know about this is because as it turns out, intuitive people are actually really susceptible to substance abuse or becoming addicted to substances. And these are substances that I wouldn't call necessarily spiritual. And I want to make that differentiation because there are some substances, which somebody might call a drug, that are spiritual. For example, I tend to believe, this is just my belief, that marijuana is an expanding substance. If you smoke marijuana, you open yourself up in terms of your consciousness and your energy to a higher level of understanding, depending on what you're using it for. This is also true of peyote and of course ayahuasca. DMT is another one of those substances that will blow your mind get you to talk to aliens, and get you to take a trans-dimensional trip. I mean, it's out of this world. And depending on what your intention, again, is you can have really profound and meaningful experiences while using these substances. So I'm not talking about that, okay? I'm not talking about being addicted to DMT. I don't know of anybody who is, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about things like booze, liquor. I'm talking about things like street drugs and also pills. What do those kids call that? Dolls? The dolls. You know, the dollies. I don't know what that's called. Like opiates and Xanax and having a dependency on substances that alter you and change your signature because that's what altering means. When we are altered, our baseline raw signature, which is the signature of our existence, shifts a little bit and it changes. And what's important to know is that the energy 
of intoxication or being impacted by those substances, especially when we're using them with the wrong intention, like to get drunk, to party, to check out, that energy is a signal. And that signal is magnetic. That magnetic signal is expressed out into the universe, of course. The universe which is responsive and which isn't going to dictate to us what kind of signal we send it. It just says, okay, I received that signal and I now bring back unto you conditions and experiences that are a match for that. And if your signal is low, which intoxication is a low vibration signature and signal, that means you are attracting back into you conditions and experiences and people and relationships and energy that is a match for low vibration. So too much intoxication, too much imbibing can be quite damaging and can cause you to create a life for yourself that is not actually reflective of your real intention, you know, your, your life purpose. Now, does that mean mommy can't have a glass of wine? Of, co of course not. Mommy loves a glass of wine. Mommy loves to go out every once in a while and have a couple of cosmopolitans and kick up her heels. That hasn't happened in a long time, like a year. But yeah, of course, I love to do that. Do I get a little tipsy? Yes, but the energy is what's important. When I'm out there having a couple of cosmos or hanging out with my friends or having a nice glass of wine, chilling out in my backyard, the energy of that is high vibration. And it's my spirit and my intention that I bring to it. It's not me wanting to use the substance for a reason other than something that's high vibration. And see, that's where a lot of intuitive people end up going. Intuitive people are always receiving information and energy and they know it. The reality is that everybody is always receiving information. Spirit is always talking to everybody, but intuitive people, those people we would call the psychics, the empaths of the world, the healers, the energy workers, and so on and so forth. Those people know that they're taking in energy and that they're working with energy. And often that can be extremely overwhelming, especially if you're in especially if you are an empath. How many empaths out there do not go to Walmart? Or if you do, you wear a hazmat suit. <laughs> we go to Walmart from time to time, but I'm just like, peace out, my friend, my husband. You can go do whatever you gotta do. I'm staying right here in the car. I can't go into Walmart because of the inundation of energy. And even though I generally keep myself at a higher vibration signature, it is, again, overwhelming. It's inundating. And when we have intuitives and empaths and healers who aren't cognizant of how this works, they find themselves kind of leaning on substances sometimes to shut it down because alcohol will numb you and often will close off your connection. So that one glass of very pleasant wine, what a nice vintage, what a great year, becomes a bottle that it becomes a bottle a night and maybe a bottle and a half. Don't tell anybody. Now I'm drinking vodka, a liter of it, and it becomes a problem because we're trying to shut off all of the energy. Some of you out there who are mediums and you don't know it or mediums and you kind of know it, but you don't like it. You often gravitate towards substances because you want to turn off all the spirit communication. You don't want to see dead people. You don't want to wake up at 3 a.m. every morning or 3.33 every single morning and have some kind of weird encounter. And so you take pills before you go to sleep, take sleep meds and so on and so forth. This is where we start to get into trouble. It's the dependency on these substances. Now, it's not just the signal that's the problem. Let's get that clear. The signal is absolutely an issue and it's because of the quality of the signal, which is low vibration, that you are going to be attracting back to you evidences that are a match for that. But beyond even that, intoxication is an energetic state of vulnerability where you're, you don't have your full faculties. You don't have possession of all of your senses, your acute senses. It's numbed. You're not on guard necessarily. You're not watching or watchful. You're not as perceptive as you normally would be when you are drunk or cracked out. Obviously, 
you are knocked out when you take opiates and all you're feeling is euphoria. This is a very vulnerable position because other beings that exist in our spiritually diverse ecosystem can see that you're vulnerable. Intoxication, not just the signal, but the energy of intoxication is very recognizable. Picture, if you will, intoxication as the color sunshine yellow, which it's not. It's more like a pukey green, but consider that it looks like a color. Well, the world of spirit can see that color, can see that light, can see that energy. And those beings that are a match for intoxication, those beings who might have an interest in taking advantage of your vulnerability are attracted to the quality of spirits. That's why they call it spirits, my friend. It's because we're signaling and we're opening ourselves up to the world of spirit. I've known people crazy people who have done things like channeled or they've done divination. They've attempted spirit communication while completely schnockered. Like we've all heard about those teenage kids who get all drunk and go to the cemetery and then pull out their Ouija board. Well, guess what? It's not the Ouija board, okay? That's just a piece of cardboard or whatever. It's them. It's their intention. It's their signal. It's the intoxication. That's what attracts spirit of spirits of a lower level intoxication like it's a fine line it's a fine line i tell myself hey jesus liked to party right he went to the party he saw oh all you have is water let me make some wine made some wine everybody had a great time some people say well wine in that day was grape juice i don't think so i think they were partying Jesus understood what it meant to be a human in a human world. And that's what we are. We're here to experience it at all levels. And that includes the sensual levels, the, the levels of feeling and pleasure. We're here, to, we're here to take part in that. But when we indulge ourselves over much, when we become dependent on it because of something going on energetically with us, that's when trouble starts to creep in. I've talked before about my father who was just a despicable drunk, like he was so bad. And when he drank, like when he was sober, I wouldn't say he was the nicest guy you'd ever want to meet, but he certainly was a pleasant, like he had a sense of humor, super smart, could talk about stuff. But when he got drunk, you could see the spirit alter. You could see the spirit change. And as a result of that light that he was casting out almost like a flare up into the universe here i am i'm all vulnerable come take advantage of me as a result of that he was a compromised spiritual individual no doubt he lived his life in a compromised spiritual state of being let's be careful let's enjoy let's party like jesus did Okay, let's have some wine. Let's have let's have a good time. Let's not get intoxicated. If we do get intoxicated, hey, that happens. We're living on Earth. That's my dog, by the way. But let's not repeatedly get intoxicated. Let's not depend on an energy, a signal, a substance to alter or change us or render us vulnerable. Because to do so, sunshine, tell them. To do so is to cause yourself a whole lot of problems. She's coming up here to say, testify, come on, say hi, oh my god, isn't she the cutest dog ever, oh my god, oh, she's a great thing, I just want to love on your face the whole time, that's all, I want you to be in my lap, all 120 pounds of you, and I want to teach all the people with you in my lap, or we could get robes, and I could wear the robe of the high priest, duh. And you could wear the robe of the initiate. And then we could just teach people together. Oh my God, we could wear necklaces. They would love it. All right, it's time to go. I'm not drunk. I'm high on life, people. Don't get drunk. It doesn't serve you. She just burped.